Today we are going to be talking about Aristotle, the physics of Aristotle. Aristotle lived about 60 years. He was born in 380 BC and he died in 320 BC. More precisely, he was actually born in 382 and he died 322 BC, of course. So, about we are talking about 2400 years ago. So, um, he contributed every single branches of human knowledge, including physics. And his physics survived how long? About, about 2000 years until until 1642, the magic year when uh, Galileo died and Sir Isaac Newton was born. So, his idea uh, really uh, survived a long time, about 2000 years. And, uh, and, and today, we are going to study his ideas, uh, especially the behavior of, of, a, of a horizontal body and behavior of a body that is falling vertically. All right, so let's get it started. We're going to start our conversation with kinematics. So, what is kinematics? Kinematics describe and explain motion using six physical quantities. Of course, now. I'm going to have a big cross. Kinematics never explain motion. Kinematics only describe motion. All right. So pay attention to this. Six physical properties. Number one, distance. Number two, displacement. Number three, speed. Number four, velocity. Number five, acceleration and number six time all right so now other day we divide physical quantities two type is scalar and vector so the distance is a scalar displacement is a vector speed is a scalar velocity is a vector acceleration is a vector time is a scalar now um, when we talk about the motion Aristotle, Aristotle was born in 382, 322 BC, uh, divide motion in two types, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about, he divide motion in two parts. According to Aristotle, the matter made of five elements, matter made of, matter made of five elements. Right, now I'm going to make a list. Okay, so number one uh, he call it earth, and number two he call it uh, uh, water, air, uh, fire, and ether. So these are the elements. All right, so the matter made of uh, this five elements according to of course Aristotle. Okay, so the earth of course is according to Aristotle cold, the water is cold, air is hot and fire is hot and ether is divine. The earth is dry, the water is wet, air is wet, fire is dry and this is divine. The motion is down, uh, water is of course the down, up, up, circular, around heaven. Uh, and the modern state of matter and this is solid, this is liquid, this is gas and this is plasma. And this was a disprove, ether was disprove the existence of ether was disproved by Michelson and Morley experiment. Eighteen eighty seven and Michelson won the Nobel Prize. In 
for his uh, for his discovery anyway now we no longer we no longer believe that matter is made of uh, this this five object matter is of course the made of uh, the the consisting in the periodic table aristotle divide motion in two types of course the first one is the horizontal motion and then the vertical horizontal motion the aristotle hypothesis is f is equal to m v m for mass and v for velocity and um, and the vertical motion his equation is v is proportional to the weight of our density okay good now this idea can be represented in the um, following way so this idea can be represented in algebraic way so the uh, force of our mass and force of our mass right okay now uh, let's see so now i'm going to put one this is equation one let's say this is one a and this is one b all right and this is equation one and this is equation two all right, 1a, I have a small velocity, and 1b, I have a big velocity. Now, which one is belong to? Which one is belong to? Which one is implies to? Uh, which velocity is implies to equation over this one? Of course, this one is a big velocity. When you have a small mass, you have a big velocity. When you have a big mass, you have a small velocity, of course, according to Aris total. Now, vertical. Uh, vertical motion according to Aristotle uh, ideas are number one heavy object fall faster than light and number two of course the velocity is inversely uh, proportional to density now before I move over here here the Aristotelian idea is that if you have a if you have a small rock and you have a big rock the big rock you have to apply more force to make the big rock move and what is the natural state of a rock or for that matter anything the natural state of anything is at rest everything like to stay at rest why then things are moving because you're disturbing it and he call it the violent motion so what is the violent motion when you throw something in the air for example rock that would be the violent motion when something sitting for example a book is sitting in my in my hand uh, what uh, what did he call it this is a natural state because this is at rest if i throw it violent state because i cause the motion so that would be the violent state of a an object okay good so here his idea is you heavy object you have to apply more force and light object you have to apply less force heavy object you have a uh, less velocity and light object you have a big velocity over here he is talking about a uh, few things he's talking about why then object is you know if i drop this this is going to fall fall to the earth why then object fall to the earth uh, or toward the earth is because according to Aristotle uh, the object is made of one of the five element the earth the f one of the four element ether is heavenly so ether is heavenly we're going to talk about ether in a second so object is made of four element fire air the earth and the water and so since it is made of one of the four element it wants to unite with the similar thing that's why it does fall according to of course and is total that's why object fall now we know object falls because of the gravity uh, if you remove the gravity it's not gonna fall it's gonna just stay there anyway uh, and the ether what is ether a, according to Aristotle the heavenly body like a planet stars they made of ether of course now we know nothing is made of ether because there is no ether Michelson and Moore experiment tells us that there is no ether they disproved 1887 and they won the Nobel Prize 19 of course not they 
Michelson won the Nobel Prize. Morley was his student. Michelson was the first American won the Nobel Prize. A big deal. Okay, now let's uh, write the equation for this one. What would be the equation for this one? The velocity, of course, is proportional to the weight. What does that mean? The velocity is proportional to the weight. That's what it means. Okay, how can we write this uh, using this equation? Velocity is, of course, inversely proportional to the density. Now, I'm going to give you a diagram and you're going to help me understand whose idea belongs to whose diagram, of course. Now, I have a diagram one, heavy object, and I have a light object. I have a light object, so it has to be smaller. Okay? All right. I have um, a object, the same object I have here, same size. Okay? I'm going to call it mass one, I'm going to call it mass two. I'm going to call it mass 3, I'm going to call it mass 4. Mass 1 is greater than mass 2. Mass 3 is equal to mass 4. Now, I have two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. So, let's call it diagram A and diagram B. And equation 1 and 2, equation 1 and 2. All right, which equation implies to this diagram? Is the equation 1 or equation 2? Which equation? implies to diagram B is equation 1 or equation 2. Okay, pause the video and answer the question and then uh, resume the video. Okay, now of course uh, the idea presented in equation 1 of course implies to this diagram A. So, this one is check and this one is cross and the idea presented in equation 2 of course implies to this diagram B. So, this one is this one cross. So, why is that? Because heavy object fall faster than the light. So, this is heavy object. So, this fall faster than the light object. Good. Check. The, uh, the, the, the dense, the more dense object uh, fall, uh, fall slower than the less dense. So, this one is probably more dense, uh, less dense and this one more dense. For example, this could be air and this could be water. The, air, uh, the water is 1000 times more dense than the air. Air is only 1.2. Uh, two uh, kilogram cubic meters. Okay, so these Aristotle ideas, uh, uh, how long the Aristotle ideas survived? About two thousand years. Okay, and who disproved them? Sir Isaac Newton and Galileo. Starting with Galileo. Okay, now if your idea survived two thousand years, what? How should you feel? Feel good now. What is this? This is a physics book, right? This physics book consists of many ideas, including the ideas of Sir Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. How many ideas presented in this book uh, are falsifiable? Every single idea in this book has to be, has every single idea, every single idea have to be falsifiable. Okay? Every single idea presented in this book has to be falsifiable. Can, can, can you find an idea presented in this book, be it by Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein? It's true. No. There is no room for true statement. If it is true statement, it doesn't belong to physics book. It belongs to, I don't know, it probably belongs to uh, Bible, I don't know. Uh, but if a true, true statement never belongs to a physics book. Every single statement presented in this book has to be falsifiable. This idea we cannot say these are the false idea. This idea really lay the foundation of what uh, discovered by Galileo and Albert uh, and Sir Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. So this idea really, really gave you a foundation, right? Foundation to understand Galileo's idea, Sir Isaac Newton ideas, and of course Albert Einstein ideas. Now, no ideas, no ideas are true. What does that mean? That means all ideas are false? No. The ideas 
uh, in the physics book, they are approaching to perfection. All right. They will never be perfect, but they approach into perfection. They approach to true, ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine point nine nine percent. It will never be hundred percent, but it's always going to be more perfect. Today's physics is less perfect than tomorrow's physics. Yesterday's physics was less perfect than today's physics, right? So, is work in progress. This is why we still love Aristotle. And this is why we still study Aristotle, even 2400 years after he, um, uh, he, he gave us this idea by his book, Physics. Uh, and, 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 and in some extent, his ideas survived more than 2000 years. For example, ether, ether was disproved by Michelson, what year? 1887. So he wrote it uh, 350 BC, right? 300, I don't know, 300. 30 BC he wrote and it survived until 1887. It survived about 2200 years, ether, the idea of ether. It was disproved just like 100 years ago. So again, um, Aristotle, we have to study Aristotle, although his ideas are, um, are no longer useful, however, it gives you foundation.